Welcome to the dark stream, Voxday, voxday.blogspot.com, and unauthorized.tv. Welcome to all the new unauthorized subscribers. Welcome to all the new channel members. Um, it just occurs to me that I forgot to send out a notification again, so I am going to do that right now. Um, Geez, I even had time, even had plenty of time to do it tonight, so that's just no excuse. Um, although those of you who are war gamers and role playing gamers would probably be extremely excited um, to know that uh, <laughs> to know who I was talking to and what we're do what we were talking about, but um, but we need to get these things out, so I'm going to do this dark stream. 453 notification and it is uh, 7 p.m. EST now and let's see what is what is the URL there we go okay so at least we got them out my apologies to those of you who were expecting it um, <laughs> Apparently, I am uh, totally transparent because <laughs> almost the first guess is correct. Yeah, I was actually, I was actually just talking to um, Glenn Raman, and we're talking about divine right and some projects related to that. So it's going to be pretty cool. Hang on a second. I'm going to have to sneeze here. Let me mute this. Okay, I think we're good to go. So, uh, <laughs> Mig G knows better than to, to rely on me to, to send out the emails every time I should. Um, anyhow, so some of you may be aware that we published a book that dealt with algorithms pretty heavily. Um, let me see if I can find, a, find an image of it here. It's called Corrosion, and it was written by the inimitable Johan Kalsi, obviously uh, a um, uh, pen name. Um, it was not my pen name, just so you know. But uh, I did uh, edit the book and I did actually um, do a lot of work on one particular chapter. This is the book, uh, The Corroding Empire. Um, it's actually a better foundation. It's a better f uh, imitation of Asimov's foundation, which is itself an imitation of the decline and fall of the Roman Empire. Um, it, it's a much better book than uh, John Scalzi's book was because Scalzi never understood, he doesn't know history, and so he never understood what Asimov was doing. Um, he tried to do a weird sort of pastiche of, of uh, Dune and Foundation, and it was just, it was just ludicrous. Um, but what what we came up with in in discussing you know, what the book would be about is what would happen if a society became too dependent upon algorithms. You know, what would happen if instead of people being able to make decisions, they were simply applying the recommendations made by the computer algorithms? And the problem, of course, is that you don't have, if you don't understand how to program the computers, you can't understand what the algorithms are doing. And you can't understand how to fix them if they go wrong. And so when, so the, the whole theory uh, behind this book, the whole theory is that um, the algorithms are beginning to decay. They're, they're decaying over time and this is having a tremendous amount of impact on everything 
related to the Interstellar Society. Um, yeah, this book is not on Amazon. Um, speaking of algorithms, we had some, uh, this created some problems for, for Amazon's algorithm. And so um, they didn't force us to take it down. We did it voluntarily. Um, but let me see. Uh, you, can, you can actually buy it at uh, arkhavencomics.com. In fact, you can also get the audiobook, uh, which is there um, and includes the ebook. Let me see. Here we go. Yeah, I'll, I'll put the link here in case anyone's interested. Um, it's a really good book, as, as I think a few of the folks have, have already said. Um, but you'll, um, you'll find it interesting. But so what does this have to do with Google? Well, according to Michael Yon, who is a very credible photojournalist, He's somebody that I've spoken to before. Uh, I wouldn't say that I know him well, but I know him well enough to uh, know that he doesn't talk a lot of BS. Um, he just came out with a note and um, pointed out that a Google Insider, he, he spent some time talking to a Google Insider who is about to come out in about a week. And let me read this to you. Achtung, pay attention. Tonight I talked for about an hour with a Google Snowden who will soon go public, a deep insider. What he means by that almost certainly is a programmer. He's talking about somebody on the technical side. Fascinating stuff. I cannot say much now other than pay attention to what he is coming out starting in a week or so from now. Source said many interesting things about how the Chinese are flooding into tech companies like Google and some of the incredible techniques they can use to brainwash or at least mislead millions of people. And this is absolutely true. In fact, uh, it's really remarkable to see how much of, for example, Indiegogo's income is now dependent upon a Chinese business. Take this as an example that I am making up based on our conversation. Again, I am making this up, but is based on our conversation. A politician tweets, saying we must protect our national interests. Google, or whoever, immediately promotes all stories that translates must pr protect our national interests to nationalism, and then, in almost real time, rewrites the meaning of nationalism to include traits such as xenophobic, racist, and references Nazis as nationalists. This happens so quickly and so comprehensively that most people will never notice that in the 30 seconds the, the curtain was closed, Google or whoever rewrote part of the dictionary in history. To state this more clearly, they can basically rewrite what you say, write, sing, wear, or hand gesture, name it, and they can rewrite that faster than we can make popcorn. They can do this anonymously, saying the algorithm is doing it, when reality, in reality, they write the rules that make the rules. Which, yes, that's absolutely true. An algorithm doesn't force you to do anything. All an algorithm is, is a set of rules that a person has created for the program to follow. It's no different. There's nothing magic about it. They talk about like, oh, the algorithm. All it is is a set of rules that have been predefined. And so there, it doesn't excuse them in any way. It actually is worse because it means that they, in a premeditated manner, set the rules in order to manipulate people. Anyway, the insider told me much more. I do not know how much already is public, but I do think that if the source is correct, President Trump and a lot of others in powerful positions will be extremely angry with some of the internet players who have already hired half of China. So now this is not new to anybody who's technical. Everybody knows this. And um, Marie says, algorithms are predictable if you watch them, exactly. The internet is overloaded, so it makes it easier to way find ways around. They're like stalkers you shake by driving in a different direction. That's correct. And um, so what they're doing on a real-time level is they're basically taking what you say. And you know, normally, the, you know, the Google rules, the page rank and all that stuff, it just looks at what you say and then it links it to everything that it naturally links to, right? So. If I say something about, I'm a fan of the Minnesota Vikings, 
it says, you know, Viking. What attaches to Viking? So it might go to the NFL, it might go to the state of Minnesota, it might go to the historical Vikings and their ravages across Europe. Um, all of these things will be, um, will be linked to that. But what they're doing here, what he's saying that they're doing there is that instead of linking what you actually said, they're changing it. And then they're linking it to all these other things. So for example, if, if, in what, when, if I said, I love the Minnesota Vikings, and then, you know, instead of the algorithm linking to all those correct links to the Vikings, they change the word Viking to uh, I love, um, you know, what it, I love the Taiwanese. And all the links, instead of being linked, you know, so my actual statement looks the same but all of the links to it are going to be inaccurate. And so it's a, it's a manip instant manipulation that is taking place. And this is how they manage to modify what is trending um, and so forth. So, um, and this is deeply and profoundly dishonest. And in fact, it probably, uh, would create a stage for a massive class action suit from advertisers because this is absolutely not the sort of thing that they're paying for. Um, and so I think that this is gonna be one more, uh, you know, one more stone, maybe a big one piled upon uh, their eventual grave. It, it is sabotage. And Rockley Marina says, I remember the days when a search would actually work. Exactly. You know, they've broken their entire purpose in the interests of manipulation. And so, uh, and this is what you get when you have non-Western people, low trust people operating in a Western environment. You know, it's, it's bound to happen. These are, you know, none of these people can be trusted. They're all from low trust cultures. And it's not surprising that they behave according to their low trust culture rather than the high trust Western Christian culture that they've invaded. And so, um, you know, this just shows how totally out of control the, uh, the demographic destruction of the United States has been. Yeah, Real Ghostface says manipulation is always their purpose. Of course it was. Of course it was. But people didn't realize it. DuckDuckGo is not that much better because DuckDuckGo uses their system. You know, you're not going to... Um, how do we win this fight? We need to be developing alternatives. You know, I mean, that's why, you know, we started with uh, InfoGalactic. We've got Social Galactic coming out. If we have to do a search engine eventually, we'll do a search engine too. You know, um, I mean, it shouldn't be that difficult to just, to just start this sort of thing. Um, because, you know, Google won out because they were simple and they worked. But they're not simple anymore and they don't work. Autarky Bear says, I have a Sigma grandfather that often excludes and works by himself for family business, frustrating our customers and employees because he's in a leadership position. Should I put him somewhere else? Yes, I want to respect him. Yeah, you need to put him off on uh, a skunk works. Give him a project that interests him that he wants to do and leave him alone you know, just judge it by success and failure. That's it. Um, someone like that is, they're not interested in, in that regular uh, responsibility. So don't give it to them. You know, they'll be happier. You'll be happier. The customers will be happier. Everybody will be happier. So um, the, uh, 
<laughs> the left is going to protect low tech trust. Yeah, but see, the thing is, is that it's hard for them to ban the truth. You know, the, are they going to actually ban the term low trust? Possibly. Then we'll come up with a new one. It's not an issue. It's not a problem. And if they want to come at the channel directly, then we'll treat them just like we treated Indiegogo and everybody else that we have beaten and beaten badly because we are just as smart as the very smartest lawyers they can afford. Um, and so it'll, you know, it'll be interesting to see, um, it'll be interesting to see how it shakes out because, you know, this can't go on much longer. It can't go on much longer because even the cucks and even the Republicans are beginning to find out that they're in the crosshairs too. That's why I've been saying for years that the alt-right is inevitable, whatever you want to call it, whether you call it the nationalist right, the alt-right, whatever it is. It's going, it is inevitable because the other side is not giving anybody any other choice. If you're gonna cuck, you get destroyed. If you're gonna be moderate, you get destroyed. If you're gonna be uh, reasonable, you get destroyed. And more and more people are discovering this. More and more people are, I mean, do you think that Google is targeting me? Are they targeting Owen? No, they don't care about us. They care about Donald Trump. They care about Mitch McConnell. They care about uh, CEOs. You know, they care about um, all of these people that they want to move out of the way. You know, the real right, exactly. And so all of you, all of us have a choice. You can keep running away from the labels and they will just stick you with them anyhow. Ben Shapiro, white supremacist. Donald Trump, white nationalist. Those two guys have done about everything they possibly can to try to avoid being called names. Um, <laughs> Atiyarki Bear says, my boomer parents think I'm insane for selling my multi-million dollar condo in the city and buying land in the country, setting up a homestead. They think I'm wasting my talents. They're boomers. What do you expect them to think? Um, Felis has the right point. No more resistance to change. No more ratcheting laws. Repeal, reverse, replace, return to sanity. Exactly. Yeah. Adolf Shapiro. Corbin Ransley said, what might be some high trust nations or societies outside the West? The most high trust nations are the Scandinavian countries. Northern, basically the farther north you are in Europe, the higher trust the society. America, because it is essentially a English uh, society with a dash of German, uh, you know, used to be very high trust. You know, it, it still is, especially in the Midwest. Um, and so, you know, when you need to, you know, I've been saying for years that people have completely failed to understand the nature of the conflict between European Christianity and, um, and the Jews. That, that conflict is no different than the conflict between the European nations and the gypsies. You've got a group of you know, low trust people in a set in the middle of a bunch of high trust people. How's that going to work? You know, the low trust people are going to take advantage of the high trust people until the high trust people get sick of it and prevent them from doing so. You know, basic logic. <laughs> Accurate logic. The history matches the logic precisely. 
um, you know, the, the only difference between the, you know, the, the gypsies and the Jews in terms of European history is that the Jews are high performance and the Jew, gypsies are low performance. You know, I was once, I was once uh, driving through Switzerland and I saw a uh, convoy of something like 20 uh, Swiss police cars driving slowly and we could see that on every um, on every exit the exits were blocked off by police cars and they actually had uh, police with fully automatic, fully automatic machine guns set up uh, on the car doors you know ready to shoot at any car that tried to exit we're like what the hell is going on here and then all of a sudden there was this even bigger convoy of uh, old Mercedes and old Cadillacs and stuff pulling campers. I'm like, what is this? And somebody said, oh, it's uh, gypsies. And then you know, they were followed by another 20 cop cars. It was like one of the strangest things I've ever seen. Um, so, you know, the... A high trust culture is only going to tolerate low trust behavior for so long. And that's why this whole thing with, with Google um, is not going to work for long. Can you clarify, elaborate on the definitions of high, low trust and high trust? Um, it's just basically an indicator for whether you uh, keep your word, whether you... Um, respect the interests of others, whether you refuse to take advantage of others. You know, um, when you've got a culture that is into bargaining, that's low trust. When you've got a culture that uh, doesn't bother locking its doors, that's high trust. Japan is very high trust. Uh, essentially, I wouldn't say default behavior towards strangers. I would say default behaviors towards others who are not your family. And so, um, you know, it, it's, it's very important and it dictates what the society is going to look like. Were all the Knights of the Round Table alphas? No. Italy is low trust. Um, they're you know they're very again like most low trust cultures are fairly high trust inside the the nuclear family and then it lessens as it goes through the extended family. Canadians are high trust. <laughs> yeah, this is typical. The, um, Bearerism said that. He read on Instagram that gypsies in Italy were threatening Santo Salvini with a hunger strike. He said, good, we can save money while we expel them. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you think Christians should defend Israel given that God declared the sword would never depart the house of David? No. If Israel's got God on their side, he doesn't need us. Um, Ireland is relatively low trust for a for a European country, yes. Um, Sweden is still very high trust. That's why they're so stupid about the immigrants. They just, they can't imagine that people are that different from them. You know, plus they tend to believe what they're told. They've been propagandized about immigration for at least two generations, uh, actually more like three, and so they swallow the nonsense because it doesn't occur to them to doubt the authorities. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, at a high trust dinner, people can split the bill in five seconds with someone covering the tip and people quickly estimating their bill. Low trust dinner takes an hour to split the bill. Exactly. Um, the most high trust country in Europe is probably Iceland. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, um, what are Jews in Italy like? I have no idea. I ne literally never met one. Um, how do you think Ohio will do when the U.S. starts to go down? Ohio will be okay. Um, I mean, I think that, that parts of it will be, you know, Cleveland obviously will be a, an issue. Um, but, uh, you know, the mid Midwest is going to be probably better off than, than just about anywhere other than like some of the, you know, like the Idaho and Montana and, and so forth. <laughs> Randolph Carter says, if you've ever spent an hour arguing in a large group over who's going to pay for their 168 coffee and whether or not to tip 12 or 13%, that's low trust. Exactly. Hungary is currently low trust, but I would expect them to come out of this whole process as one of the high trust countries. Any news on Rebels Run? Uh, yeah, we're, um, we'd like to, well, first of all, if you've already pledged, please go ahead and fund it. We're still waiting on um, a number of people to finish their funding. So, um, so hop on that. Um, if you're interested in getting involved, um, you know the link. I mean, I think we've got room for about another, I don't know. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a bit more room, um, not a ton, but there's, there's a bit more room for people if they're interested. <laughs> Shapiro called me out again today, said I'm a racist. Shapiro is one of the biggest racists on the planet. Shapiro believes that he's ethnically pure and that his his ethnically pure race is superior to everybody else. There is no one who is as racist as Ben Shapiro and Dennis Prager. They believe that their people are a light unto everybody else in the world. You can't get any more racist than that. And they can't hide behind, oh, uh, it's just a religion. Really? So, so when Shapiro talks about being 100% pure and his wife being the same, they're 100% pure religious? You know. Remember, evil always inverts. So when people like Shapiro talk about Christians being racist, you know they're the racists. You know they're the racial supremacists. There's no question about that. Shapiro is the one who wants to ethnically cleanse Israel. He's literally endorsed ethnic cleansing in public, in writing. You know, I don't, I don't care what Shapiro says about me because he is a worm tongue. He's a, an absolute liar. There's, there's nothing that comes out of that little racist's mouth that you can take at face value. And so remember, they always, always invert. That's what they do. Um, Vox, why is Shapiro so obsessed with you? Because he know, he's known me for, what? Probably since 2001. He knows that I'm smarter than he is. He knows that I see through him. He knows that I have the ability to expose his evil to all the people that he preys upon. And so he is constantly trying to um, uh, push me to the perimeter so that people don't listen to what I say because he's afraid of getting exposed. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm Maybe, I don't know. I mean, I, I, somebody said that uh, the Daily Wire stole my bit. Um, I'm I'm sure I'm not the first person to uh, to do that. Um, 
it's funny. That made me laugh. I haven't I haven't seen or heard anything about Matt Walsh until that thing about the Daily Wire came up, which made me laugh because Matt Walsh, both Shapiro and Matt Walsh have fled, not just run, they have fled from debates with me. You know, <laughs> Carnivore's right. Shapiro doesn't want you to write a book on him like he did on Peterson. That's, you know, it's like I said, I like to see the way these guys lie about me because they project. They can't help it. You know, what, is, what does Peterson say about me? Oh, I'm in love with my own intelligence. No, I'm not. But Peterson is. You know, what does, you know, what, what does Shapiro say? He's a, he's a racial supremacist. He's a racist. No. Little Benny is the one who has publicly endorsed ethnic cleansing. Little Benny is the one who says that, that he is racially superior to everybody else. You know, it's always inversion. Yeah, I got to do that. I got to do that review of, uh, I got to do that review soon uh, that I've promised to do of uh, the right side of history. Shapiro's app appallingly ridiculous uh, book. Total lie. Um, saw you mentioned Harlan Ellison the other day. Thoughts on the PC game they made on I Have No Mouth and Must Scream. I mean, it's a classic. Um, I only played a little bit of it. I'm not that into role-playing games, especially on the computer. I played like Sorcerer, Enchanter, a little bit of Hitchhiker's Guide, a little bit of Zork. Um, but and of course, the original adventure um, on the IBM PC, because that was one of the only things you had. But you know, I was never a big text adventure guy. Um, <laughs> that's not true. User 13 said, everyone over at the Federalist dreads a Vox takedown. John Della Rose doesn't. He's probably the, he's probably the only person at the Federalist who doesn't. Um, do you like any Nintendo games? Uh, yeah, there's a, I mean, there's a lot of good ones. There's a lot of good, there's a lot of good Nintendo games. Ultima 2 is awesome. I finished that one. Um, a Calabeth has always been my game. Love a Calabeth. Um, welcome Hedda Gaber. Yeah, speaking of Hedda, I've been re reading a lot of the Eddas recently. Um, I just finished reading through uh, Snorri Sturluson's Younger Edda. Um, although the version that I read, it struck me as pretty boulderized. Um, but, uh, oh, that's cool. Alicia Shepard says, uh, she said several text adventures published in international magazines. Nice work, Alicia. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Ben Anderson says, hearing Athens and Jerusalem just makes me angry. Uh, Jerusalem, in the Christian context, has always meant Christianity. It, it's talking about the spiritual Jerusalem. So, of course, what people like Leo Strauss and what people like uh, Ben Shapiro do is they say, oh, well, by Jerusalem, of course, they're, they're referring to, they're referring to, uh, Judaism and 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 they're referring to you know um, the Talmud and they're referring to the Pharisees. No, they're not. It's absolutely false. Um, and so, yeah, but but again, it's the same game that we're talking about Google doing. It's about redefinition. There's two ways that you can approach concepts. Number one is you realize that there's a conflict between two words. You know, there's multiple meanings for the same word. It's leading to confusion. And so you coin a new term in order to prevent confusion. That's what I do with science. Okay. I mean, people make fun of me from at, at times because I refer to Scientodi, 
I refer to scientistry and scientage. You know, oh, that's 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 too hard to remember. It's too complicated. Blah blah blah. I don't care. I use them for clarity of thought. Scientody refers to the scientific method of theory. You know, hypothesis and testing, and then falsification or not. That's Scientody. That's the process that Kuhn and Popper and everybody wrote about. Then you have scientistry, which is just the profession of science. And this is when you get the weird, this is where you start getting into the dishonesty. People saying, well, you know, science is what scientists do. No. You know, if a scientist defecates in the woods, that is not science. Or whether it's in the woods or not, it's not science. Unless, of course, he is only doing so as part of a test of one of his hypotheses, in which case it is both scientody and scientistry. And then scientage is the knowledge base. Now keep in mind, I didn't create those three things. I didn't even define those three things. P.Z. Myers did. I simply applied labels to them so that if I talk about scientody, if I talk about scientage, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I am offering clarity through that taxonomy. So that's one approach. What's the other approach? The other approach is to intentionally deceive by assigning new meanings to words that don't hold it. Judeo-Christianity. What is a Judeo-Christian? A Judeo-Christian is someone like the Apostle Paul, a Jew who converted to Christianity, a Jew who acknowledges Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That is truly what a Judeo-Christian means. That is what Judeo-Christian meant for about 1,945 years, to the extent that it was used at all. Then, starting around, you know, the, right around the time that uh, the big push was put on to try to open up the American immigration system, which began in 1920, and the Jewish organizations were pushing it hard, especially after the war, um, they started using the term Judeo-Christianity. And now you see a lot of idiot conservatives and a lot of fake conservative, a lot of cucks, a lot of nail clowns, they're all using Judeo-Christian in order to try to attach Judaism to America, which is totally false. Absolutely and totally false. Historically false. All that stuff that you hear, the melting pot, nation of immigrants, um, Judeo-Christianity, um, all of that stuff is a complete and utter historical falsehood. And so, you know, you look at this and, um, you know, you have to see through it. And what, again, what they're doing is instead of clarifying by offering new, by offering neologisms for in the place of, uh, definitional conflation, they are creating additional definitional conflation in order to confuse. So either you are helping clarify and you are helping speak the truth, or you are attempting to confuse in order to manipulate and deceive. When you see people stop, when you see people Using false definitions, you know they are a snake. You know they are a worm tongue. Don't, don't ever take them seriously after that point. Always be suspicious of anyone who does that for any reason. Because there is no intellectual justification for doing so. Let me hit some super chats here. Um... Let's see. Okay, we hit a few of those already. 
you once said that you could see five nations coming out of the United States collapse. Could you elaborate? That's just basically based on the geography. You know, you're going to see something in the American Southwest. You're going to be something, see something in the Pacific Northwest. Um, the Midwest, I can see something, you know, kind of like the former Confederacy. Um, you know, uh, and then you've got the, the Yankee states. We know exactly where the borders are if there aren't, if there are going to be, uh, you know, borderlands, border zones, there usually are, you know, what, what historically were called marches. Um, there will probably be something like that. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's very unlikely that the United States is going to stay together as one single contiguous political entity. Is Minnesota left because of the Germans or because of the Scandies? Uh, it's more the Scandies. You know, um, my relatives are, uh, you know, I'm, I'm married into a heavily Scandinavian family and all very good people, um, pretty highly moral, uh, and just kind of instinctively leftist. Um, very high trust, um, but you know the 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 Minnesota left is so far left that it doesn't even have a Democratic Party. It has the DFL, which is the Democratic Farmer Labor Party. It's the only labor party, uh, only major labor party in the United States. It's not an accident that it was the only state to both vote for Dukakis and for um, and for Mondale. Now, the fact that it almost went for Trump is really interesting because that's the first sign that, to me, that was the first sign that we're beginning to see true racial identity politics um, hitting the white population. Because, you know, they're now, even those left-wing Scandinavians are beginning to move towards the Republican Party just because the Republican Party doesn't hate white people like the Democratic Party does. Also, I think that seeing uh, a Muslim get elected into office in Minneapolis was a real shock to a lot of people. Uh, will Canada fall or will it be a part of Civil War II? It'll be a part of Civil War II, most likely. It's going to fall. Um, Boyne Gobert says, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Starliner says, let me use my Discover card for unauthorized. I'm missing out, Vox. <laughs> Sorry, we we have nothing to do with that. Um, you know, if, if they don't take Discover, they don't take Discover. You know, there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes. You know, one thing that surprised us was that you know, we wanted to set up our own direct crowdfunding. And we found out that all the credit card companies hate it. It's not a political thing. It's not a control thing. They just hate crowdfunding because there's nothing they hate more than chargebacks. And crowdfunding tends to have a lot of um, chargebacks attached to it. So um, when you're dealing with credit card stuff, it's just pointless to try to reason or argue with them because there's, there's things going on at layers that you don't even know about. Marie Golay says, tell the truth. Is Shapiro really the girl from Small Wonder? Uh, I don't think so. Um, you know, he's he's pretty obviously a uh, uh, a very soft sort of gamma male. The I mean, <laughs> if if Shapiro, if anyone ever got a picture of Shapiro in a speedo, and it, that would absolutely destroy him once and for all. Um, Nobody would ever be able to listen to anything he said ever again. Um, will the 2030s breakup be violent or peaceful? Probably violent by the looks of it, unfortunately. Um, Hans Laga says, Hello Vox, forgive me if this was already asked, but I'm curious if the dark stream will ever have you and a guest on for discussion. Uh, it has before. Um, that just involves a level of planning and organization that uh, my current schedule does not permit. 
you know, I'm doing well to, you know, remember to get the notifications out, which I'm committed to doing. Um, actually getting somebody on and dealing with all the, the necessary complications and stuff. I mean, that's just, that's just more hassle that I don't need. Could you do a Vox Adversity on how neocons are Trotskyites? Uh, yes, that would be a good idea someday. Michael Rothman said, I left Blaze TV today and said, I'm not a fan of Glenn Beck. The operator proceeded to say, Glenn Beck is not an investor. It was obvious the lady doth protest too much, methinks. Logos rising. Indeed, well, if you've left Blaze TV, I uh, encourage you to, to join Unauthorized TV if you haven't already. Um, 300 people have already joined just this month. It's, uh, it's growing. Um, you know, I, I can't wait to announce our new documentary. In fact, I talked to the, uh, to the editor and asked him to please put together something that like some just little two minute thing that we can announce it before it's done. Um, but to announce it in a way that does justice to it. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to do that in a couple weeks. What are your top three favorite fictional books? Uh, I'm assuming, <laughs> I like that. Not necessarily novels, but also, you know, anthologies would count. Um, I would say The Two Towers, or if you consider The Lord of the Rings to be one book, The Lord of the Rings. I would say The Dark is Rising, the second in the Dark is Rising series. Uh, I like to reread that pretty much every year. And the third one is tough, but I would have to say Watership Down by Richard Adams. That's one of the most uh, original, interesting, uh, compelling, and ultimately rewarding books that I've ever read. So those are my answers. Catch-22 is definitely not on my list. <laughs> Jose says, Glenn Beck's internet comeback shows how badly internet famous people want mainstream approval. It's pathetic. It is. I mean, why does anyone care? We don't need it. I never wanted it. You know? I was a nationally syndicated columnist with Universal Press Syndicate, their chosen heir to William F. Buckley, and I turned down most of my media requests. I didn't want to spend time running around speaking in sound bites trying to look smart. Ridiculous. Was Shapiro intended by the media powers to be the neocon heir of William F. Buckley? No, he's he's not um, he's not influential enough. Uh, I mean, ironically, you know, like I said, uh, UPS wanted me to be the replacement for him in the newspapers because they felt that uh, I was the most intelligent of all the you know, up and coming commentators at that time, you know, which include included people like uh, Jonah Goldberg and stuff, Sh Shapiro was just a, you know, he was just a bit of a, a show pony at that point, um, you know, regurgitating Republican talking points. Um, like, hey, look at this, look at this little prodigy who can repeat Republican talking points. Uh, Fahrenheit 50, 451 was okay, but, you know, like most, uh, science fiction completely missed the point. I mean, it's interesting to see how nobody, except for the guy who wrote The Camp of the Saints, saw the immigration problems coming. That's 
the most important thing in human history, uh, as far as human history goes, the single most important thing to have happened in the last 100 years is the mass immigration, the largest movement of peoples in human history. And virtually none of the science fiction writers have addressed it in any way, shape, or form. They're still ignoring it. It's amazing. Duralex Sedlex said, I and some coworkers travel for business to Minnesota, all the way east to west, and as far north as Anoka. <laughs> that far. We only take off the MAGA hats in the Twin Cities. They're starting to compliment us. Yeah, I'm not surprised at all. Jack London is not even in my 20 favorite authors. None of his books would be in my in my top three. I mean, I do like The Call of the Wild. So is Civil War II the same thing as the U.S. breakup? More or less. I mean, I assume that's what people mean. Do you think Shapiro fully knows the evil he's pushing, or did he just sell his soul for lollipops and fancy pants? Well, no one who sells their soul for lollipops and fancy pants fully understands the evil, uh, because most of them, if, if they knew how bad it was, they wouldn't have done it in the first place. So does he fully know it? No. But does he know that what he's doing is evil? Yes, he absolutely does. You know, I've mentioned this before, but he had a bit of a crisis of conscience back when he was in his teens. And he emailed me and said, you know, I'm just regurgitating these Republican talking points. Um, you know, but, you know, what should I do? And I said, well, I think I think you should stop doing that and you should think for yourself. But he obviously didn't take my advice. And that's probably one reason why he's constantly taking shots at me and stuff, because he knows that I know he sold his soul. I know the choice that he made. He and I both faced similar choices and we went different paths. And he, you know, I chose the path that allowed me to keep my soul. He chose the path that required him to sell it. Let's see. What do you think of the writings of H.G. Wells? Uh, very uh, innovative and very influential, but not particularly interesting these days. I'm more impressed with the fact that he created wargaming. Christopher McCullough says, does the concept of re redefining terms extend to naming things after famous concepts, like naming a fleet of enemy ships Krakens? No, no, we're talking about, that's just fiction. You can do whatever you want. Um, we're talking about uh, actual concepts that have a distinct meaning, like nationalism. They're trying to redefine nationalism now in much the same way that they redefined America 100 years ago. <laughs> Logos Rising is rubbing it in. Having Taco Bell for dinner. Enjoy it. Uh, Nine Princes of Amber is great. I love Nine Princes of Amber. Let's see. Yeah, Dune is awesome. I don't like One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Should the Collier Junior Classics be ready by the end of 2019? Probably not all of them, but uh, the, we will be doing the crowdfunding before then. Ayn Rand was godless, yes, and, and she was a bad writer. I have not read the Daybreak series. Kaija Nielsen says, I took down Godzilla. Thank you for the advice. I adopted it and it helped. I didn't know Godzilla was a problem, but I'm sure Tokyo appreciates it. How do I get my Sigma to try out milking a cow? Um, well, it's probably going to involve bikinis and lingerie. P.S. My name is Kaya. Oh, Kaya. Sorry. Kaya Nielsen. 
Um, you know, men are simple, women. Just put it on the table. Offer a deal. You know, nine times out of ten, he'll take it, whatever it is. Do words ever change meaning over time naturally? Yes. Um, it's not always related to deception, but uh, these days it is much more likely to. Thoughts on F. Scott Fitzgerald? Uh, great writer. I've read everything he's written. Um, very, very keen observer of human behavior. Um, not always the most interesting plots. Uh, are there science fiction books exploring the impact of the artificial womb industrial reproduction? Yes, the Dune series, among others. Was Tolkien aware of the social sexual hierarchy? On an instinctual level. <laughs> Morse code bear took her little or took took my little bear to Taco Bell for lunch today. He finished his hockey summer camp and shares your love for the Bell de Taco. Excellent. Are you doing crowdfunding for the new Space Bunny comic? No. So, um, apparently I missed a super chat on society. Let me see. Have you read I, Claudius? Yes, um, but in high school, so I don't remember much of it, and what I remember is confused with my actual history uh, reading. Um, it was good, though. I think it's worthwhile reading. Power rankings. Who are your top three teams? Um, New England Patriots, Kansas City Chiefs. I'm going to go with New Orleans Saints rather than the Eagles because I have more confidence in Breeze than Wentz getting through the season without getting hurt. Um, Danes seem way more nationalist than Swedes. Why are Swedes specifically more cucked than other Scandinavians? Probably because they were the imperialists. Um, so they, uh, they are less nationalistic than um, the Danes or the Norwegians. Also, Norway has a very pragmatic uh, influence preventing them from being as globalist because they uh, pay out a lot of oil money to the citizenry. So anybody new who comes in means that there's less for the people who are already there. So there's already some pressure to not do that. Uh, does IDW, oh, the Intellectual Dark Web, <laughs> I was thinking about the comics publisher, bash identity politics to present, prevent Wignats? Um, does that like white nationalists? No, they, they bash identity politics because they don't want, um, oh, I guess, well, they, they don't want whites to form their own identity, whether it's nationalist or not. They're, they're trying to, to prevent the American mainstream from defending their own interests. Henry Aller says, do you like 40K? No, I was a fantasy battles guy. So I don't have a favorite Primarch. Should North American Euros go back to their ethnic homelands? No, because they have, um, they've been in the United States too long. Most of them don't even speak the language. Remember, nationality is about ethnicity, but it's also about language. And it's also about religion. Um, Vox, my liberal, Corbett says, Vox, my liberal brother-in-law and his wife are realizing the reality of identity politics ever since they had kids. Of course, once you have children, you have skin in the game. That's why no politician who doesn't have children should ever be elected to office. Angela Merkel doesn't give a damn about the future of Germany because she has no kids. Uh... Submitted to Christ. Seems like Owen collecting as many email addresses as possible of his followers would be a game changer. Then he could live stream from any channel on any platform. Yeah, I, I agree. I've, I've made similar recommendations. And I mean, I encourage everybody here 
sign up for the, the Castellia House, um, the book club email list. You know, we don't bombard you with emails. We send, I don't think we've even sent out an email for two months, but it's a very effective way of being able to very rapidly let people know about a new book, a new crowdfunding thing. Um, if, if, uh, if the blog were ever taken down, that's how we can get in touch with people. Um, you know, that's one of the ways communication is key to winning conflict that you know, when people say, when the bears say, Oh, how come the, how come the VFM are, are so effective? How come the, the dread elk are so effective? It's because we communicate, you know, we can act in mass very quickly. That's why, um, you know, that's why 500 VFM pack more punch than 10,000 bears. Because, you know, if, if, if it can be delivered, you know, immediately and in unison, it's just much more powerful. So, you know, sign up for those things. If, if, uh, if you're not signed up for on Owen's list, get on it. Um, Clark Smith says, hi, Vox, terrific streams lately. I just want to show my appreciation and support. Can you explain the Talmud? Do you have a video out there on this subject? I don't have a video out there on this subject. I'm not going to have a video out there on the subject because I have no desire whatsoever to you know, dive into that, that massive um, labyrinth. But the easiest way to understand it is that the Talmud is the case law. It is like the Supreme Court interpretations of the written law of the Old Testament. So the Old Testament lays out the law, and then the Torah is a collection of a bunch of lawyers, essentially, called rabbis, who explain why you either don't or do have to do what it says in the Bible. So, um, so basically think of it as being the same as a bunch of judicial decisions. That's more or less what it is. Uh, Sans Mimetics says, Hey Vox was a DJ in New York City in the 90s, worked with Moby, your evil twin. I think we met ages ago. Uh, we might have. Uh, Psychosonic was out there with TVT Records um, in the early 90s. Uh, Owen said, society is a myth. I've said that my whole life, care to expand on society. Well, I, I disagree. I don't think society is a myth, but society is not a, um, there is no social contract. The social contract does not exist. But, I mean, and society is not a unitary thing. Society is, is a collection. However, um, society does exist in a predictive and a statistical sense because large groups of individuals um, do behave in such a way that their behavior can be collectively analyzed, anticipated, and understood. So um, I would say that society doesn't exist in some senses, but does exist in others. Um, thoughts on what the next iteration of the internet and how we might take ground away from Google at all. Uh, well, it's getting around the whole DNS thing and it's getting around the whole centralized control. So, um, I don't verify anyone, so no, you can't uh, verify. Um, if you want to sign up for the, here, this is an easier place. Um, If you want to sign up for the book club emailing list, I think just clicking on that should get you there. So, all right. Well, uh, that actually went a little bit longer than I expected, but um, keep an eye out for Michael Yon's uh, prediction of some uh, Google Insider coming out within about a week that uh, promises to be very interesting. Um, 
otherwise, uh, thanks for tuning in. We will see you at the next dark stream. Uh, don't hesitate to visit unauthorized.tv and watch the streams without these little annoying dropouts and interruptions there. Oops, didn't mean to turn that one on. This is the dark stream. I'm Vox Day.